a 17th century manor house in Tamworth. Nothing like rooting around in old country houses. That's just the best job in the world. At 100-year-old boot manufacturers, Drew sees the light. In fact, an entire shed full of lights. I can see. We've got one, two, three, four. And there's one leaning up there. This is fantastic in here. And at a working stone mine, he has to learn some new negotiating techniques. Would it pain you to get rid of it? Right, cars are so it would pain. Mm. OK, well, I can ease that pain. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Wow. Blimey. Look at this. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Uh, is that marble or stone? He bargains hard. 16. 1750. 16. Sold. Marvelous. And there's nothing he won't buy. I would sell it for 2000. I've got to get a deal. It's in my nature. With help from Rebecca. I'd rather go. You drive me around the bend. Lovely. I'll just go downstairs and we'll sort out payment. And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. Through Pritchard's base in Wales, the salvage business is booming. It's a Thomas Jekyll fireplace, late 19th century. That's fantastic. We'll get it to you ASAP. Perfect. In my opinion, I would say English, Irish antiques of the 17th century through to the 19th century is the finest antiques and money. Best of the best for years. And this is what I like to try and find. Everything was made to last. You bought one for life. My clients really do like English furniture. They like the history. They particularly like the design, the patina and the style that it gives any home. One of the best locations to find examples of great British craftsmanship is in the stately homes and castles that dot the UK. So today, Drew set his sights on a place with a past and is heading to one of the country's most eclectic, the 17th century Thorpe Hall. I think it's been in the family since the 1600s. It's a vast estate with loads and loads of outbuildings and a large house. There's a lot to see. I'm very excited because they've never sold. Brilliant. The potential for excellent finds are huge. Like Birmingham. It's known for an impressive array of architectural history, including an 11th century Norman castle. Just a few miles away is Thorpe Hall. The large 17th century manor home has been developed over the last 300 years by the same family who still owns it today. Now a bustling hunting centre and working farm, the latest in the family line is Hugh Inger Innes Lillingston and his wife Katrine. First came into the family about 1642. Richard Ing, mayor of Leicester, made good and came and bought the house that was on this spot, which isn't the one you see now, but it's incorporated in the middle of it. Gradually, over the years, it got added to, to what you see now. Most of that happened in the early 1800s. Ladies who were in the house were gathering salvage, really, <laughs> antiques. <laughs> Aiming to clear out some of their centuries of furniture, Hugh and Katrine are hopeful they will have some items to tempt Drew with. We're in the process of doing a huge regeneration and rebirth. We've got very, very good farming going on, but we've also got uh, preservation of woodland, it's trying to keep that balance, having a, a successful farming enterprise, but also managing to keep an estate in its sort of traditional way, to, as far as is possible in the 21st century. <laughs> and the house needs a little bit of clearing, too. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Well, it's lovely, but should we go inside? <laughs> it's freezing. It's freezing. It's freezing. <laughs> Tell me about the house, then. So unusual from the outside. Unusual because you've actually come around twice. Whoa, I like this room. Oh my god, look at those. Yeah, those aren't original, oh. of course, but they're quite fun, aren't they? They are great. Can they go to a warehouse in Wales? Oh. <laughs> no, they're, they're, no. They're, they're not these. Degree sci fi, in a way. Yeah. If Flash Gordon had lights in his house, yes. it'd, be like that. it'd be those. I'd pay lots of money for them. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. These 1960s marble-based and bronze lamps aren't for sale, but potentially valued at thousands of pounds, it's possibly no bad thing. I love the mix. The centre table's amazing. When you're outside, you don't think you're going to walk into this. It's really exciting. This house has been lived in and lived in by generations and generations and generations, but to be honest, you never know what's going to pop up. <laughs> oh. I'd love to own that. 
yes, I'm sure you will. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jerusalem. It's too much. We love that one too much. It's instantly one of my favourite interiors. It's slightly bonkers. They've got leather furniture with punk memorabilia and modern art. It's a really cool house, actually. I really like it. Drew was hoping to find British-made quality items, and this house is brimming with buying potential. Well, what about this chair here? Would you consider selling this? For me, yes. Can I have a look? Can yeah, I sure, have a look. Yeah. look. yeah, absolutely do. Oh, love the colour. Just a great big size as well, isn't yeah. it? It's a whopper. What is it, 40s? No, it's no. earlier than that. It's just into the 20th century. Yes. The ladies here knew what they were doing. They were... Mm. Echoes the style of earlier great furniture makers like Howard and Son and Shulbred. It's exactly the kind of piece Drew wanted to find, as quality made English furniture with age is always popular with his clients. This chair, once cleaned up, could be worth around £1,000. It's in really good condition, it's hardly been sat in. The scale of the chair is interesting, it's very deep. You find that with a lot of these large country house armchairs. Almost all I can't put my feet on the ground if I sit right back in it. The scale is good, it's large, because it's in a really large room. I like to buy, particularly the late 19th century into early 20th century, they are the most comfortable and they have basically the most profit in them for me as well. I think I'd pay £500 for it. What do you think? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Drew's managed to do one deal on a piece of British craftsmanship, over 100 years old and in remarkably good condition. He suspects there may be others. I'd like to see some more. I'd like to buy some more. Oh, you keep them talking, I'll get the club fender in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that in country estates there are often treasures tucked away from public view, Drew now wants to look in one of the storage rooms. Bit of a squeeze in here, Drew, but come and have a look. There's a real mishmash in here, all kinds of weird bits and bobs. Lots of these, these mirrors, yeah. These mirrors, one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the frames I, I'd want, it's the actual plate. Really? Ah. Yeah. And that's good? Yeah, it's very attractive, they're very saleable. The frames, they've all completely had it. Yeah, have They're, they're yeah. scrap. They're um, be interested in that one, that one, that one. Can be a bit of a gamble. Ooh, yes, exactly. You're right, it is it's falling really apart. In. They have a tendency to just fall to bits. Yeah, well, I'm glad things. you knew that, because yeah. I could have had that on my head. <laughs> that one, that one, and this one over here. Nothing like rooting around in that. Old country houses. <laughs> you love it, eh? That's just the best job in the world. <laughs> it's from around somewhere between 1810 and 1820. That's really old. They have loads of dressing table mirrors, and these are early 19th century. So these are Georgian. All the frames are completely rotten and broken and smashed. But what they do have in there is three really nice pieces of old, distressed glass. This mirror plate like this is sort of gold dust for us, really. I can find another nicer frame and put them in. It's very desirable and hard to find. Although dilapidated after years of neglect, the glass in these are in quality mass production. Simple mirrors made in enormous numbers became the hallmark of middle-class dressing tables. These ones are from the 1830s, and their plate glass is still intact. They could work well as a wall feature and be worth around £500. These ones here are like... £30 a pop for the mirror. Yeah. Right. That's it. I don't want the wood. This Understood. one looks a bit better. Price-wise, in that state, 100 quid maximum. I'll take it on as a project. We might try and fix it. OK, yeah, cool. Yeah. We'll take a hundred nice for it? Yeah, we'll yeah. take a hundred for that. Yeah. 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 Marvelous, sure. thanks. That's £30 for the two small mirrors and £100 for the big one. Even in crumbling frames, the mirror's age and quality of the glass means they can still be brought back to life. The larger one of the three mirrors that I've bought, that will probably be restored. That's two deals done on quality items from the 19th and early 20th centuries. Next, Drew wants to see if he can uncover any other pieces worth bidding on in one of the other storage rooms. That was uh, staff bedrooms, really. Oh, what's he found? That's a that. Georgian. That's a Georgian. Isn't Victorian. It? Victorian. Yeah. Oh, my God, it needs attention. <laughs> that chair is by James Shulbred. Really? Yeah. Good God. It's a late 19th century armchair, still in its linen. I think it's made by Shulbred. It's in mint condition underneath. The upholstery's worse for wear, but the frame and the leg and the caster are almost like it's never been used. If the stitching was all perfect, it'd look like a brand new 19th century armchair. 
Drew's uncovered yet another quality example of great British craftsmanship. Their pieces were highly sought after for their trademark quality manufacturing and design. The company closed in the 1930s, but their furniture is still prized today, and this chair could be worth around £450. I'd be interested in that, but the chair like that is two to three hundred pounds. So when you say two to three, which end of two to three are you talking I'm, I'm about? I'm looking at it more, it's becoming more two. <laughs> <laughs> the more I'm looking at it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not in great nick, is it? Meet in the middle, 250. Salvage seeker Drew Pritchard is at a 17th century family estate in Tamworth. He's hunting for some of his favourite items of quality British craftsmanship and is trying to do a deal on a 19th century shoebred armchair. So when you say two to three, which end of two to three are you talking I'm, I'm about? I'm looking at it more, it's becoming more two. <laughs> <laughs> the more I'm looking at it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not in great nick, is it? Meet in the middle, 250. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Marvelous. Done. Done. Thank you. Very <laughs> Thank much. you. Thank you. Yeah. It's good because we'll never do it. No, we'll never. So it's nice to know that it has a new life. The house, with its 300 years of history, is throwing up exactly the kind of quality items Drew was hoping to find. So we call this the Bollywood room for obvious My. reasons. <laughs> Limey, Charlie, look at that. <laughs> wow. They mention that they've got armchairs in most of the bedrooms and we start looking through them and then I start to have a look at another chair in the other corner. Oh, what? A really good quality caster at the back. I know exactly what I'm looking at. I got really excited because it's the thing I want to find. So that's a good one. That's a really good one. Really? Yeah, yeah. you can tell by the caster. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning now. I've spotted Oops. a telltale sign, Drew. It said Howard's in a massive left. What it is, is a Howard and Sons country house armchair in unrestored condition, totally original. Not in good nick, got to be honest, it's a bit of a stinker, but it's authentic, it's the real deal, and I am over the moon we've been able to find it here. Absolutely stinking condition, but... <laughs> yes! <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Now yeah, look yeah. at that for a caster. Yeah. And there you go, Howard and Sons, London. Oh, it's exciting when you find these. Like Christmas for you, isn't it? It is Christmas. <laughs> oh, That's creep. proper, eh? It's that creaking you or the chair. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a bit of both. <laughs> Decorators and furniture makers Howard and Sons opened in London in 1848. Known for their elegant designs and extreme comfort, they invented several new styles of seating. Their work is highly prized even today, with the Queen herself owning a collection. Buried under layers of modern covering, this chair has its original upholstery and three of four casters. Having a maker's mark can add 10% or more to the value of an item and this chair could be worth around £2,000. As is, because of the caster missing, I usually pay about £1,200 for that in that state. Uh, uh, 800 for that. Yeah. My mantra has always been, if there's three things wrong with something, you really should walk away. With these, it's different, because they're such a following. They're very expensive when they're finished. They're very difficult to get hold of and they don't come on the open market very often. It is really as good as it gets. Today was better than expected. I bought really well. I just got lucky. Absolutely loved dealing with you and Katrine. Lovely people, they're such fun. It's always interesting, things that you take for granted and that you're used to, you know, you suddenly see them in a new light. It suddenly makes us realise that everything well-made by craftsmen of the 19th, 20th century, is worth something, really. Back in Wales. Guess what I found in a big country house? You found a Howard armchair. Howard armchair. How many castles missing? One. Original fabric? Paid 800 quid for it, which is a really good buy. Country house-tastic. Can we get that off, chaps? Drew's obsessed with Howard armchairs, but so are a lot of other antique dealers. Howard's, they're out there. They are a bit like hen's teeth. And the one Drew's bought back, OK, it's not in brilliant condition, but we've seen 100 times worse. They're old Regency period um, dressing table mirrors. Knackered, completely knackered mirrors. Frames of the mirror plates in them. That's nice. Were really good. 
60 pounds for the pet. And then I got one more, which I paid 100. Got access to a big country house. I really get goosebumps. It's the age of the buildings and the money that's behind them. And it just gives them the potential to deliver truly amazing quality British antiques. Exactly the sort of things Drew's after for the business. And that's what happens at Thorpe Hall. It's so exciting. Expert upholsterer Craig gets straight on with the shoebread chair. This front here, done traditionally, it's hand sewn onto the seat, so we're going to have to hand sew that. And this side's even worse, the, the arms come away. Without stripping this down, Drew likes it traditional. To maintain its manufacturing authenticity, Craig's leaving the original horsehair packing intact and repairing the cover used... A wax thread, which is a slipping thread, and this type of slip stitching. Next, he needs to refasten the arm to the frame. Hopefully now, this should fit on here. Before the chair is given a final once-over. I've re-secured the horsehair packing to the frame. That's fixed to the frame. Fixed the calico back down. And the front facing, I've hand-sewn that back on. So that's this chair now, more or less ready to go out. Always on the hunt for his next source of stock, Drew's already planning another trip. Britain has a huge industrial heritage. Absolutely any time I get a chance to go and see the interior of a factory or an industrial setting, I want to go. Industrial items are always great to have on the website. They're usually top quality. Utilitarian items are places with an industrial heritage. Drew and T are travelling just over 100 miles east to visit a unique business that's been operating for over a century. See, we're up in the Peak District and we're going to William Lennon Boots. And these guys have been at this for over 100 years. It's a family business. All sorts of different things you can get from these places. And they're always pretty damn good. Now, this place, being here for 100 years, could yield some really good pieces. Because they're a factory as well. You'll be all right if you talk about their industry with them today, because you're used to talking cobblers, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the rolling hills of the Peak District stretch across six counties and were declared Britain's first national park in 1951. As well as the impressive natural setting and mineral mining industry, most prevalent between the seven footwear for the local workers and miners, William Lennon set up his shoemaking business in 1897, which moved to this site in the early 20th century. Now the business produces up to 4,000 pairs of boots each year. The company is run by William Lennon's great-grandchildren, cousins Dan Walker and Liz Slattery. The processes we use, we'd like to think, have probably not changed a great deal. We certainly don't have any computers building boots. It's a handcraft using the industrial machines that he would have used when he set up the factory. We still do uh, some niche industrial footwear, such as foundry boots, but at least 50% of what we do now is for fashion. When Drew has a look round, he'll probably find old machinery that may well interest him. Among some of the 100-year-old equipment, Dan and Libby think they've got just what Drew could be looking for. So want to kick off in the boot workshop. Oh, blimey, look at this. It doesn't look like anything's changed. Not much has. <laughs> How long's it been here? Uh, we've been here since 1904. Oh, I love it. The only one left in the world still doing Traditional. this sort of thing. Yeah. Really? The only one in the world? Yeah. I love that. The method of producing heavy-duty industrial footwear using handheld processes at every stage is what makes this factory unique. It's exactly the kind of place Drew loves to get into. Love these things. Yeah, they all... Are they cast iron? Are they cast iron? What are they? Uh, yeah, they are cast. Aren't they great? Yeah. God, they're properly handmade, aren't they? Yes, they probably... I don't know. ...to come to look the stock. But the most important thing is they've never moved. So it started in this building, and it's still in this building. So, traditionally, places like this, very hard to find, but extremely good for me to buy from. Have you got loads of these? I think we've only got two. Do you want to sell them? We've probably got one for sale. That one's one sale. in use. OK, which way? Yeah. Down this way? This way. Drew's after some quality craftsmanship from Britain's industrial past, and things are already looking promising. Is that stool in here? Uh, yes, it is, yes, behind us. Marvellous. Another deluxe upholstered one. <laughs> this one, you'll let this one go, it's not being used. Right. Somebody shoved rubber in there, or le well, leather, yes. to stop it moving which is actually not a bad idea. 
Just modify that. Modified. Is that, yes. I mean, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's more money. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> the big thing with singer stools is making sure there's no cracks in the cast iron base. Seat's good, winds up and down, but there is no wing nut on it, so Carl's going to have to find a wing nut. Well, the last one I bought of these, I only bought it a few days ago, and I paid 75 quid for it. I think that was right, yeah? Is that right? Uh, yeah. Right, well, that sounds all right. Is that all right to you? Yes. Marvellous. Thank you very much. Price for the stool, £75. A decent turn in it for us. It has to be a perfect finished product. You're taking a piece of industrial furniture and then putting it in somebody's house who potentially has got white walls and white carpets, so it has to be absolutely spotless. Drew's bagged himself a great piece of industrial furniture that will take little work to bring up to scratch. And on the other side of the workshop, he spied another of the key items he was hoping for. Would you sell any of these? 40s and 50s factory furniture are still being used every day. Now, these are great for my clientele. Just what we're after. All of a sudden, this factory furniture is now fashionable and people want it. These five-tiered boot racks are probably from the 1940s and are well-worn from continuous use. The timber shelves set in a steel frame, colour and markings are the calling cards of industrial salvage. As they're also authentic factory pieces, they could be worth around £350. How about 125 quid? Salvage expert Drew Pritchard is at a bootmaking factory in the Peak District, aiming to unearth aged quality items of British manufacturing. Would you sell any of these? Yeah, we'll be open to offers. He's hoping to do a deal on a... How about 125 quid? Again, that sounds reasonable to me. Sold a scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's another good deal on a piece of industrial history. But Drew's always got one eye on a potential package. Can I have a look at the other one as well? Yeah, Can sure. you do a deal on both? Yeah. 125 again. So £250 the pair. Yeah, that's sure. Yeah, sounds sure. Good. Yeah, yeah, sounds well, good. Still, they only Thanks sell pairs much. here. You're welcome. They only sell pairs here. <laughs> <laughs> Is that again? Yeah. Yeah, Drew's really finding his feet with two deals done so far. I think I've got a shoe sniffing fetish. Then. But there are still plenty of other corners to search for more industrial items. Oh, lovely old building. It is just a dumping ground of stuff. It is. Yes. We bring all the old machines to die. Can I have a look through here? Yeah, sure. Thousands of shoe lasts. Yes. Thousands of them. So what else have we got in here, then? Steel toe caps, box full of steel toe caps. Oh, I love it in here. <laughs> How do we get up there? It's the dumping ground, and it's fantastic. I love places like this. They've literally, you can see somebody stood at the door and just done that, and just sort of hooked something in. I think he said 15 to 20 years, nobody's been even just in that corner of the shed. I love it. Just all sorts of great stuff. We've got a few of these. Some of the old light fitting. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want rid of them? Uh, yes. Yeah, then. No, not doing anything in here. These are in really nice nick, actually. See? You got one. Three. Yeah. Another one over there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's one leaning up there, I think, as well, behind me. And uh, this is more. Oh, hang on, there's one, there's one right in front of me there. Yeah. Age-wise, we're looking any time from 1950 to 60, and they're in remarkable nick because they haven't been in, like, a welding factory or a paint factory or something that's going to get them splattered with rubbish. They're really, really amazing original condition. They really are. Revo were a West Midlands-based lighting company founded in the early 20th century. They became known for their high-quality industrial and street lighting, often with an iconic green shade. The company no longer exists, but their products are still sort of seven factory tube lights are in great condition, and with their original ceiling hooks, they could be worth around £175 each. How much would you want each? I'll just take them all. I'll buy all of them. I don't know, 30 quid? Um, I was going to say 25 quid to make it easier. 25? 25 quid a pip. Yeah. Take them all. Boom. Marvellous. With a final deal done on the lights, Drew's got a great selection of quality items from one of Britain's traditional manufacturers. Today was great, really enjoyable. Got to view this absolutely fantastic little factory. It's just brilliant. I mean, look at all the stuff. The shoe racks we bought today, I think, was definitely the purchase of the day. They will fly out. 
could pile anything on those. The little singer stool I've bought, they're a design, classic industrial design, made to do a job, and it's still doing it sometimes nearly 100 years later. It's been a good fun day, I think, to have Drew to come and see what we class as our Monday to Friday work and see somebody take so much interest in our place. It's quite, um, quite humbling. I just think that's a wonderful thing. It's a British company. They've oh, been going yeah. over 100 years. I think they did well there. Yeah. Do you know what I liked about that place? Uh, everything. It had soul. <laughs> I've been waiting uh, to use that all day. Put your foot in it now. <laughs> Before heading back to base in Wales, Drew has the chance to check out more of Britain's mining past by visiting an original stone quarry. He's travelling 150 miles to the Lake District. The thing about going to a mining museum is that it's full of items from Britain's industrial past, and museums usually collect the best examples. So anything that Drew can get hold of should be really good. It's a mine with an astonishing collection of vehicles up there and they've called us in because they've got a load of outbuildings and sheds so you never know museums have always been pretty good for us particularly the working industrial type museums i mean look how much stuff he's got down there how many bloody cranes has he got and more look and he's got a train he's got a full-size train <laughs> oh it's madness great madness set in the cumbrian countryside the Lake District is known for its natural beauty, but also its mining past. Industry came into its own to cure the tracks to the ground. Productivity at Threlkeld Quarry increased from a few tonnes to 80,000 tonnes of granite quarried each year. To honour this rich industrial heritage, Threlkeld Quarry Museum was founded in 1995. The site is run by a core number of staff and a band of volunteers, headed up by Ian Hartland, with help from assistant engineer Dickon Chaplin Price. We're not just a museum of old relics. We're actually keeping the old relics alive and keeping alive the skills that go with them and hopefully passing them to the younger generations. We have quite a vast collection of vintage excavators, again, some of which you can see on site. Some things are essential to the organisation and wouldn't be sold at any price by Land Rover. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks for having us, fellas. Uh, well, that look at your shed. Knowing Drew loves engines and heavy industry, Ian wants to start by showing him his collection of original machinery. Blimey. Look at that. God. Oh, my God. I've never seen the light, to be perfectly honest with you. Look at that one. Now, that's quite an exciting bit of kit. Does that run as well? Yep. Oh, I'm a wow. very well. That is oh, just yeah. fantastic. All the surviving steam navy in the world. These machines are from the early 20th century. Navigators, or navvies, were used to shovel and lift rock in large-scale construction. This one is an historic item and is definitely not for sale. 1909. Come round the corner and there's the steam navvy there, 1909. What a fantastic piece of engineering. I absolutely love it. That it still exists is wonderful. It's an incredible place. Right, come on, let's carry on. Yeah. With his industrial appetite whetted, Drew wants to see if there's anything to buy in one of Ian's many sheds. Oh, yes, look at this. This is my dream workshop. Look at this, T. Fantastic. That's idea than your dream workshop. That's perfect. First impressions of the place are quite remarkable. Museums like this, anything to do with railways, mining, anything at all, heavy industry, are rich picking grounds for me. We always walk away with good stuff. Dirty cast iron stuff, but good stuff. I like it a lot. I'm all right to have a look around over oh, there. Yeah, Obviously, you know why I'm here. I'm going to try and buy things off you. Well, try. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I knew it'd be difficult. As soon as I met you, I thought he's not going to want to sell me anything, this fella. <laughs> Being a working museum, many of the items here are still in use. Drew might have to pull out his best negotiating skills to persuade Ian to let him bid on anything. Always the stuff right at the back that I'm, I usually find my best things. Mm -hmm. It's been dumped here the longest and forgotten about. Thomas, a tank engine. It is. It's been decapitated. Yeah. <laughs> there was one thing I saw on the way in. I doubt you'll want to sell it, but I'll ask anyway. You've got Smith's wall clock in there. Ah, yes. Yeah. That one. It's just to tell the time of the trains. So is it for sale? Or... 
Maybe. Maybe. So that one. Oh, I like the pain you have to get rid of it. Uh, it might cause us a little pain. Mm. Okay, well, I could ease that pain. Yeah. <laughs> How much would you like for it? It's a genuine station clock, that. Which station does it come out from, do you know? Here, came from Stockport. Stockport, Stockport station. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And it's kept time ever since. Yeah. I like that. Mm. There's an old industrial clock on the wall, a Smith's one. Um, it's got great colour. It's from Stockport Railway Station, which I quite like because a lot of my family were from Stockport originally and we did have a connection to the railway as well. Smith's Clocks from London were the largest clockmakers in Europe. Known for quality and precision, they were used in stations once the British railway system introduced standard £1,000. 250 quid. Hmm. Might have to think about it. With Ian keeping his salvage cards close to his chest, Drew will have to revisit this later. But for now, he's continuing the hunt. These are all spares. Well, you can't get any of this stuff, can you? No, you've got Brilliant workshop. Pick it up where you can. These? What? See, those are all eight castings you've got. Well, that's raw iron. Oh. Are they just brackets? Yeah. Can we pull them out and have a look at them? Three, I know what they are. Mm. They're lamp brackets. Mm. Nice big ones. I can hear Ian's brain thinking now, thinking, Oh, I like that. You're not having that. <laughs> I know. It's like an exterior corner light, wrought iron and cast alloy. Missing its light. I've got the light, so I can put those two together now. Used to hang lighting in a railway station, this wrought iron corner lamp bracket is probably late Victorian. As Drew has the right light to pair with it, once assembled, it could be worth around £200. What will that cost me today? Oh, well, uh, 200 quid. A value on something like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I've got a value. Mm -hmm. wow. That's 50 quid, Greggy. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more about 75 myself. Mm. Should we uh, meet at about 60 and stay friends? <laughs> Salvage expert Drew Pritchard is at Threlkeld Mining Museum in Cumbria. Hoping to procure well-made pieces from Britain's industrial part with anything so far, he's hoping owner Ian will agree. That's 50 quid, grab you. Mm, I was thinking more about 75 myself. Mm. Should we uh, meet at about 60 and stay friends? Yeah, that would be right. Yeah. Right. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. That's fab. Drew's managed to secure one item from Ian's much-loved stacks of salvage. He now wants to see some of the other sheds, and what better way to get there than on the train? So what about all these? Did you bring all these up here? Oh, yes, everything you see. Everything? Yeah. That one looks like it'll work. They all do. They all work. That's good. The large machines on site, like many of the other items Drew likes to look of, are still... Cool. This is better than your other shed. Oh, all sorts in here. What else are like that? You got any more of those? Big tabletops. Oh, I think that's the only one. Would you sell it? I've got some nice trestles that'll go underneath it, you see. Mm. I can make something out of it. Mm. It's a nice big old planky top, that. Mm. Not keen, are you? No, well, it's quite useful. Going through all the stuff here, I'm not having much luck, and then I see a trestle table top. These are great. They're really good stock for me because everybody needs tables. They're very good for retail, very good for restaurants. So if I can marry the tops up with those, I'm making nice big tables that we can sell on and make a few quid out of. But Ian seems reluctant to part with that one. Able to be refashioned as a dining table or large side table, depending on the type of trestle paired with it, large tabletops like this one have good resale value and could be worth around £250 each. Hmm. Is this him pondering? Oh, there's four words that get you through most conversations. Oh, what, what are they? I. Yeah. Well. Hmm. And yes. <laughs> and that, that'll sort you for the evening. Do you want to think about that as well? I'll throw a figure at you. That. We'll think about it. Mm. 100 quid. What do you reckon? I'll just leave that with you. Mm. Mm. Just leave that there. 
Ian may be reluctant to let go of the useful tabletop, but outside, Drew spots a potential. Oh, I don't know. Oh, good easy, uh, You're hiding them from them. Right. Do you know where they came from? Uh, Always nice to have a bit of history. Oh, yeah. They're a bit damp, and there's some woodworm holes in them, but there's five, and they've never been painted over, never been cut down, never been varnished, never been messed about with. In the perfect condition for me. This is good. Good timber that I can do a lot of things with. Would you want to sell them, Ian? Hundred pound a pop. Do you want them all? Yeah. I'll leave you that one in there for you using that one. Mm hmm. Oh dear, say we can uh, have a deal. Have a deal on that one. Yes, I. I. Thank you. Deciding to leave the table inside, Drew's managed to persuade Ian to. Are you keeping it? Still being used as a session clock, in effect. We'll leave it. Mm. 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 <laughs> yes. Today, I love. I've come to somewhere I didn't know existed. I can't say how important I think these museums are. Just the history of, of this sort of stuff. I love it, I just immerse myself in it and I find it never endingly interesting. Very good day, enjoyable, nice to meet you, and uh, we hope he comes back to see us again sometime. Nice to see things being put back to good use. I'm happy with those tabletops. I'm not going to part with that clock though, is he? My family have got a connection with Stockport and with the railways, so sort of can profit on it, yeah. <laughs> so a good day on the whole. Drew's hoping the team back in Wales will be equally as enthusiastic about his new industrial treasures. Hi. Andrew's come to say hello. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. We bought these. Now, they're pitch pine yeah. tabletops from Trestle Tables. Five of them. They're completely untouched. They're in lovely original condition. Have we got a set of trestles to hand, Gav? Can you find some? They've got an age. What did you pay? £100 a piece. That's them. Oh, great. They're really good. That's yeah. fantastic. No bases. Doesn't matter. Drew is going to marry the items with trestles that we've got here. We've got five wonderful... Yes. Yeah. I've got the lamp. It was um, 60 quid. Oh, I so. really like that. Yeah. Nice. Now, Drew's eye is very good at marrying things up, but we've got a really, really good light that's just going to be perfect. Great. A great find. Yeah. Once the racks from William Lennon have had a careful cleaning and a coat of metal polish, they swiftly sell to a private buyer in Iceland. The restored chair from Thor Paul sells to a mechanic in Grantham, who fell in love with it. And Alex tackles the larger early 19th century mirror. Well, we'll look about setting it back in with resin, see if we can make a nice, strong repair to the thread. Using an earlier repair job, he mends the original mechanism holding the mirror in place. I'm hoping this will hold. There we go. Perfect. We have an adjustable mirror again. Once secured, the mirror is ready to go up on the website. And finally, the Howard & Sons armchair, also from Thorpall, is waiting to form part of a pair for a private client in London. He's paid in advance, knowing that if anyone can find another one, it'll be Drew. The proof really is in the pudding. When I go to all these old places, I'm able to buy interesting, well-designed and beautiful things from the past. The quality and craftsmanship behind all of this stuff is second to none. Drew's done really well. He's got an amazing haul of items with a fantastic mix of history. Brilliant. <laughs>